Hello, this is Bill Quinn. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, if you're listening for the very first time, uh, the whole podcast is about some of the wonderful nonprofits and uh, NGOs, particularly here in New York, but also we talk to people who do great work all over the world. And this week is going to be one of those situations where we talk to someone who's doing work all over the world. Uh, we're going to be talking with the co founder of the Bloom Collective, Aaron Densham. So let's get to it. Here's my interview with Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Bill, hello. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for uh, for calling. Not at all. Thanks for reaching out and for (laughs) being open and having a chat. So, yeah, to begin with, what was the the issue that you saw that that needed to be addressed? For for us, we we sort of felt that, uh, and I felt strongly that there's sort of a big hole, a gaping hole in in the education system at large, and um, there's this very strong focus on academia and we sort of always felt like there was a whole realm, sort of whole world missing from education which is uh, being lost in society and, and, and that sort of is, I guess, this realm of just exploring oneself and one's beliefs and values, dreams, passions, purpose, I guess the sort of realm of like, I guess, self-education sort of thing, if that makes sense and, um, uh, and surely that, that is sort of a missing half to creating a holistic education so you're Australian, but you do this where you've been to Israel. What are some of the other places you've been to? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're sort of really trying to get focused in, uh, well, I'm trying to focus strongly on Melbourne uh, next year as much as we can to bring these sort of programs to schools. But yeah, we've sort of been trying and testing like our educational approaches and all around the world. So I've sort of, I guess, a long time ago, I, I worked in Rwanda for a number of months. And um, this year, <coughs> me and Michael, my, uh, my work education partner at Bloom Collective, is, we were in India for two months um, working on a project just outside of Bangalore. He's now in Israel for um, working there at the moment. And uh, I've been up in remote northern Australia working in indigenous communities. So we're sort of trying to just get out there and see how far uh, our education approaches and beliefs sort of can, can carry. How much of a transition is, or how much of a change do you have to make to adapt the program to a, a different place, a, to a completely different setting, or do you have to? Do you think it's a kind of a, the, the, the instruction is sort of universal and that this is a... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's uh, very different from place to place. Um, in terms of, I guess, the, the little cultural differences in, in exploring self and opening self and being vulnerable and all this sort of stuff in terms of, from a student perspective. Um, so, you know, you go to India and I guess uh, there's a very different way of being Indian students than there are to Australian students and American students. Uh, so that shifts. And then also, I guess, um, from, the, from the educator point of view, how the educators, you know, how creative the educators um, in terms of their ability to to bring that creative, open education to their students. So that's been a challenge, a challenge as well. So our time in India was very much focused on facilitation training with, the, um, with a bunch of sort of uh, Indian, I guess, young Indian village women, Indian village women, which we were working through another organisation with and trying to give them the tools to, to be more engaging. You know, so much rote learning, uh, Blackboard, and the same thing over and over again every single day. Uh, in terms of approach to education, even even in a more dynamic, they're trying to do more dynamic things over there. But it's just okay. Let's have a welcome song. So the welcome song is the same welcome song every single day. You know, every single day. So we sent them like, imagine if you came to our training and we we said, okay, stand up and sing a song. And the next day we stand up and sing the same song. And they're like, how would you feel? Oh. It'd be very boring. Well, well, that's exactly what we're doing with the kids every single day. So how do you think they feel about that? And so, yeah, we wanted to do with, with training to give them uh, more tools um, to, to, to motivate their students and engage with their students over there. So that was the first point of call, I guess, for our work over there. So, yeah, to answer your question, it's super different from place to place and different communities and cultures at different levels. Um, but I think in Australia and in America, we're sort of the place where we want to demand a little bit higher and more from our kids in terms of exploring, you know, these self-fulfilling pathways, if that makes sense. What is one of your more memorable lessons that jumps out and says, that was a time that we really, uh, one of my favorite moments in the classroom? 
I think my favorite, probably my favorite, I'll, I'll, my favorite seminar that we, we ran at uh, the, the school that I worked at for three, four years, really developing this approach, um, was a seminar we called Autonomy Seminar, Towards Autonomy Seminar. And it was basically three days away. We'd leave on a Thursday evening and we'd come back on a Sunday evening. And this was in the middle of the final year of um, uh, sort of year 12 students. And um, it was called Autonomy. And essentially, we just took them away and we just, it was about, running workshops essentially on the, the people that they want to be and the things that they want to do, life post-school. Um, and it's sort of a, the most powerful seminar I think we ever ran, and we ran it every year for our year 12s. And we'd, we'd start off with a pretty confronting session, sort of the Thursday evening, and um, we'd take kids through a real sort of deep, uh, well, I guess, fun exploration looking back at their school and then moving into... Um, somewhat, I guess, quite an emotional <laughs> look into um, uh, their own obituary, their own writing, you know, what, what, what it was to look back at their life and how they'd like to be remembered and who they'd like to be seen as by their loved ones, their friends, their families. It's quite a confronting thing for Year 12s to do and we set the space up as gently as possible and check with, you know, students before um, who's, who's sensitive and who's, you know, had issues in, in that area just to double check with them, they'll be okay. And, and we run this sort of really intense program and, um, and then we explore that. And basically the seminar from then on, we say to them, so if that's the point that you want to be at the end, I guess, of your, your high school, your, your life, sorry. Um, how are you going to get there? And this seminar is about exploring that. How are we going to put those into place for you to be the best version of yourself, to be the best you, to live the life that you, you truly choose? And so we run a series of, of, of sessions throughout the next few days based on that, sort of around, you know, themes of happiness, of relationships, of um, pursuing your passion, looking at Plato's, Plato's Cave. Uh, we use, do a crazy, a crazy fun uh, session based on Plato's Cave. So basically what we do is we actually we blindfold out a bunch of students, we put them in groups, and we, we place them in these booths, these isolated booths, essentially part of the program and each of us you know dressed up as these agents and we uh, place them in these isolated booths and they're inside these booths and we basically say to them okay we need to do we need you to create this uh this object so it's a little let's say you know we need to cut a specific a4 piece of paper in a specific way and we say to them okay we need 30 of these go so they're off they and we we can scissors and you know the materials required and off they go and each group gets i guess a, a different little shape and material and they've just got to keep going and we re- reward them with these um, just M and M's each time. So they, they fulfil it, and we reward them with M and M's, and you know, we try and push it as long as we can. And the students, you know, at first they're they're all expect part of an activity. They're excited and they're sort of you know creating these these objects and sitting there and giggling away. And I guess after twenty minutes, thirty minutes, they're starting to get a little bit frustrated. Um, you know, it's a bit it's a bit boring, and uh, but they're in these booths, and we said, so we can't leave, and you, we really need you to uh, continue to create. Um, these objects, we really need them. We're sorry, you know, you just got to, we need 30 more and, and keep rewarding them with these M&Ms. Eventually what we do is we, we, we sort of pull out one student who um, I guess is a, a student that we can trust <laughs> and we pull them outside the room into the, into the, into the daylight and outside we're, we're like pumping and playing this fun music and there's food um, and we have like a little dance party with these chosen members from each of these, uh, these little groups. Um, however, while we're out there, we also trash them with shaving cream. So they're completely trashed with shaving cream all over themselves. So they're having an absolute ball, but they're completely trashed and dirty. And we basically tell them, okay, you need to go back into your cave. You need to convince everyone to come out of their booths. You know, life is much better outside uh, than, than inside these little, these little booths. Tell them to come outside. However, what happens is they're, they're trashed in shaving cream. And so they head back into these booths and um, half the group don't want to come, especially the girls, <laughs> um, because, you know, they're covered in shaving cream. And, they're like, and we told them, not, you can't tell them what happens out there, just, just try and convince them to come. And, oh, it's so much better out there, come, it's, life's amazing, it's great. And no one wants to come. Um, eventually we break down all the booths, pull everyone out and have this big shaving cream part and fight. So sort of party and fight and have a great time. And then we come back and explain the allegory uh, of the cave to them. You know, and how we replicated that throughout the throughout the session, and how did it feel being in there, and why didn't you come out, and and then use that as a platform, I guess, to um, uh, to yeah, discuss life after school, and what does it mean to challenge and step outside the box of the life that's you know expected of you by your community, by your parents, by yourself, yeah. and how do they know you know what 
what is out there without even trying it or exposing them to it. So I guess that's just a snapshot of a, of a, of a session we'd run at an autonomy seminar. That's really cool. Actually, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so do you have any uh, future plans? Like what are you visiting? Uh, what countries do you have that you uh, are planning on, on doing the program in soon or next? Yeah, well, um, uh, my big focus is, on, is, in, is in Melbourne next year. I think we just want to see if we can um, really sort of uh, make some strides in one city in one place at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the plan. I mean, our absolute dream is try- I'm trying to get a really strong team together at the moment. Um, I mean, my ideal dream, uh, I guess, long term is to, to create some sort of, I guess, uh, degree or training where we, we have these kind of role model educators, which, again, sit side by side in schools dedicated to just helping kids explore uh, themselves, act, giving them the tools and platform they can be their best selves. Um, so putting these, I guess, young role models through, I guess you could say that they're sort of, I guess, coaches in a way. They're sort of life coaches and, and we give them the really pivotal one-year, two-year training and facilitation and well-being and mindfulness and in all these sort of different positive psych techniques and um, highly creative education techniques and, and they're sort of put in schools um, and are there full-time to work with kids uh, as sort of, yeah, I guess life coaches, uh, life facilitators self-education facilitators so that's the plan um so next year yeah i'm really looking forward to i guess a bit of um sitting still in melbourne <laughs> a lot of moving around uh and and building a good team and saying that to play with this partnering with schools and saying to play with this idea what is something uh if someone else has a uh wants to do something similar what was something what is something you have learned that you could pass on i'm mean, pretty happy with my trajectory i think um, I think maybe I would have listened to uh, listened to people around me a little bit more <laughs> and learn from learn from I think I was pretty stubborn uh, we sort of strolled into a school at 22 23 and started a department and uh, and it was an absolute blessing I don't know why they ever trusted us to give a free run <laughs> had to, to run around a school and do crazy things but uh, it was an absolute dream and I often tell people that I um, I spent four years like making mistakes there um, which is which is wonderful. That's exactly how we learn. It's just uh, you know running a session and being completely inappropriate, so uh, you know, fixing it, and running it next time, and uh, making mistakes and uh, pissing people off. And uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know that's how we learn failure and uh, failure and fixing and learning and failing and fixing and learning. And um, you know, so I guess get out there and and do that. Don't be afraid to step in and, and be silly and make mistakes and. And, and fix them. But I think uh, if I give myself a little bit of advice, I'd also I think, listen a little bit more to the more elderly educators around me. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Learn more about the Bloom Collective and Aaron Densham by visiting the, my website, which has links to their website videos on YouTube, as well as their Facebook page. Also, a huge thank you to Babita Patel for connecting me with Aaron. The episode would not have happened if it wasn't not for her. And of course, again, a thank you to Aaron and the Bloom Collective for being so generous with your time and talking to me and answering all my questions. Well, if you like that episode, I have good news. There's plenty more on my website, thebillquinnpodcast.blogspot.com. Plus, you can get notices about future episodes by following me on Twitter and liking my Facebook page. The Twitter account is at Bequin Podcast. Also, you might work for an organization, run an organization, or know somebody who does work for an organization that would be a great fit for a future episode. Please get in touch. Email me at thebillquinnpodcast at gmail.com. I hope to hear from you. Uh, you you were, you were mentioning it. you 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 were, you uh, you weave 